Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thanking God on tonight, amen, that he's allowed us to come together one more time, amen, to look into his eternal word. Amen. I pray that you've had a blessed day today. So listen, call up a neighbor, call up a friend, and let them know the Holy Temple Church of Christ Wednesday night Bible study is on the air. Amen. And we're looking to have a high time tonight as we go into God's word tonight to see what he's left on record for us. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Truly God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I just want to thank God. Amen. For each and every one of you that tune in every Wednesday. Amen. Those by Amen YouTube on our Facebook page or on our streaming platform and them that are on our conference call line. Amen. We greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now on tonight we're going to book the book of Job. Praise God tonight. Chapters 39 and 40. So I want you to get your Bibles in your hand and get ready, amen, tonight as we go into the word of the Lord on tonight, amen, in Jesus' name. But before we get started, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer, asking God's blessings upon us, everyone that is tuned in, our families, praise God, and asking God to have a profound effect on us tonight as we study his word, and that we'll receive something from him, praise God something that will cause us to be better, something that will cause us, praise God, to be amen, more attentive to the things of God. And so that's what we're asking God on tonight, and to enlighten us, amen, and just to have a closer relationship with Him, which is so important in these last and evil days, amen. So listen, with all hearts and minds clear, we're going to get started on tonight. Let us go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you, and we bless your holy name. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And for this, we say thank you. God, we thank you, hallelujah, for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this hour, an hour in which we can come together to look into your eternal word, God. Those examples that you've left on record for us that we could be better. Amen. Hallelujah. And do those things which are pleasing in your sight. We say thank you. Lord, we pray tonight for everyone that is tuned in tonight. I pray tonight you would bless them, their families, oh God. God, if they're going through something right now, we pray that you would take care of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for those that are sick and shut in on tonight, those that are in the hospital right now, God. We pray that you would bless in a special way. Lord, those that are standing in the need of a miracle, God, we know you're a miracle worker. There's none like you, and we thank you for it on tonight. Father, we pray that you look across this land, those that are in authority, God, touch hearts, minds, Lord, on tonight. Move in the midst of your people in a special way to help somebody, Lord, to help somebody see you, to help somebody, amen, that's going through something right now and trying to figure out how they're going to make it to tomorrow. Lord, we know you can do all things but fail. And for this, we say thank you. So, Lord, we pray tonight that you would bless us as we go into your word. Lord, we pray that this word will burn in our hearts on tonight. And, Lord, that we pray this word will take and strengthen us and encourage us that this word, praise God, will cause us, amen, to hallelujah, go after you, God. We thank you for it tonight. Now, Lord, we pray for those that are fighting over in Gaza, Lord, those that are fighting in Ukraine, those that are losing their lives, Lord, we pray that you would bless, bless these families, oh God. Look upon this land, oh God, like only you can. Lord, we know that you can do all things but fail. And for this, we say thank you, God, and we praise you. Now, bless us on tonight. Keep us and we shall be kept. We thank you and we praise you. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We got to call on the name of the Lord no matter what we go through. We got to pray and keep lifting his name on high because we know, amen, if we, amen, trust in him, hallelujah, that he can do all things. He never fails and he never makes a mistake. And praise God. That's what we've been learning, amen, in the book of Job, praise God, of how, amen, uh, God is this awesome God that we have available, this awesome God that we serve. And that's the thing we have to know on tonight, amen, that God is awesome. And so, praise God, as we normally do, we do a recap of the last Wednesday's Bible class. And we found God in chapters 37 and 38, amen, Eli, Elihu was speaking many words but had no knowledge. And we saw that, amen, just speaking about even the things pertaining to God, but yet he had no knowledge pertaining to God. And then in chapters number 38, amen, uh, we find God, the creator, speaks. Now he opens his mouth and he begins to speak himself, amen. Uh, he's not going to let anybody else speak, amen, for him, but he's speaking himself. And when we get to chapter 39 on tonight, praise God, I mean, the Lord continues to describe his creation. And, and as I was studying this and I was looking at this and I said, well, well Lord, why are you, amen, assuring with Brother Job concerning your creation, concerning how great and mighty you are? Well, it was just a reassurance to Job of who he was trusting in, continue to trust. 
who he was leaning on, continued to lean on, even at a time like that, that was going through in his life, he could continue to trust God and to lean on God, that God never makes mistakes, amen, he never slumbers, he never sleeps. And so even with us, as we go through trials and tribulation, different things that go on in our lives, uh, sicknesses and all of these things, even death, praise God, we have to understand that in the midst of it all, that we're to trust, amen, in the name of the Lord. So that was on, amen, last Wednesday, 37 uh, and 38. And then 39 on tonight, the Lord continues to speak, amen, describing his creation. And then in chapter number 40, praise God, Job answers the Lord. And so we're going to see Job respond because God begins to ask him some questions. And once again, just to reassure him, amen, of the God that he serves, to reassure him that he can trust God even in this. And that's the hardest thing to do, to trust God while you're going through, while you're dealing with something. And in such as Job's case, my God, can you imagine being able to trust God at a time such as this, being on the top of the mountain and now finding yourself in the midst of the valley? My God, my God, lost, don't know which way to turn. But one thing Job never did, he never, amen, lost his trust in God. And God just wants him to be reassured of that because we know it because we know the story as we begin this in chapter one of the book of Job, this conversation, amen, between, amen, Satan and God. And God was the one that said, have you considered my faithful servant Job? He said, there's none like him in all the earth. Now, isn't that something? So we can see now, here as we get to chapter number 39, that why Job is still holding on, amen. He's still trusting God. He, he, he cursed the day that he was born, and he wished he would die and all of these other things, amen, because he didn't want to do anything not to be in right standings with God. And this is something important for us to understand on tonight. Uh, so as we go into chapter 39 of the book of Job, so get your Bibles in hand. Let's get ready. We're going to go into the word of the Lord on tonight. Um, we're going to read our commentary like we normally do in specific verses. Then we'll read the King James Version of the Bible and some commentary behind it uh, in the name of the Lord. So we're going to go, amen, to Job chapter number 39. So I want you to get your Bibles in your hand. And we're going to begin on tonight. The Lord continues to describe his creation. The commentary says, and we're going to be reading, amen, uh, pretty much that whole chapter. It's going to just do the whole chapter of chapter 39 in the commentary. So we'll go through that rather quickly. Um, God inquires of Job concerning several animals. God inquires of Job concerning several animals. And he does this because he wants to show or teach Job something concerning his creation, but also that Job can learn something about him. And I think that's important for us to understand that when God does something, everything God does is for a purpose. Every creature was for a purpose. Everything that God did was for a purpose. Yet we might not understand it, but it was. Amen. And that's the thing that we have to always understand. And that's why we have to always trust in the Lord. So let us go to Job chapter 39. We're going to read the commentary and then we'll go and we're going to read those scriptures. Amen. Uh, in the name of the Lord. And it actually does the whole chapter. So I'm going to read. It says, in these questions, the Lord continued to humble Job. In this chapter, several animals are spoken of whose nature or situation particularly showed the power, wisdom and the manifold works of God. He's always doing something to show us his love for us, his care, his concern for his creation um, and everything he does. It says, listen, it says the while as it is better to labor and be good for something than to ramble and be good for nothing. So once again, giving us principles in which to live by. He says from the from the untamableness of this and other creatures, we may see how unfit we are to give law to providence who cannot give law even to a wild ass coat. And it's just, it's just talking about the nature of the particular animal and how it operates, um, which is important. It says, listen, the unicorn, a strong, stately, proud creature. So it even goes over the characteristics of each animal and it's giving us examples here and we need to look at this because whether we realize it or not, you can find some of these same attributes in, in human beings and in individuals, praise God. So he says, look, he is able to serve but not willing. And he's talking about the unicorn. He's able to serve but not willing. And God challenges Job to force, to force him to it. It is a great mercy if where God gives strength for service, he gives a heart. It is what we should pray for and reason ourselves into, which the brutes cannot do. Those gifts are not always the most valuable that make the finest show. 
Who would not rather have the voice of the nightingale than the tail of the peacock? The eye of the eagle and her soaring wings. So once again, going over these attributes of each animal, uh, the, the things that make them so uh, spectacular, you know, in what they do. He says, and the natural effect of the stork than the beautiful feathers of the ostrich, which can never rise above the earth and is without natural affection. Question. It says the description of the war horse helps to explain the character of presumptuous sinners. Everyone turneth to his course as the horse rushes into the battle while a man's heart is fully set in him to do evil and he is carried on in a wicked way. By the violence of his appetites and passions, there is no making him fear the wrath of God and the fatal consequences of sin. Secure sinners think themselves as safe in their sins as the eagle in her nest on high. And the eagle is up so high, uh, he, he just thinks and feels as he's protected, he's covered. How many animals can even come up that, to that level, to that position that he finds himself in? It says, listen, in the clefts of the rocks, the eagle, he says, but I will bring thee down from thence, say of the Lord. You can find that in Jeremiah 49 and 16. He says, all these beautiful references to the works of nature should teach us a right view of the riches of the wisdom of him who made, who made and sustains all things. It says, the want of right views concerning the wisdom of God, which is ever present in all things, led Job to think and speak unworthily of providence. And so you see, he, he breaks it down. He gives us this information concerning his creation, how they function, their characteristics, and how they think, how they operate. And he does it as a warning to us to make sure that we don't operate in the same manner, but to trust in him, trust in the maker, the creator, amen, of all things. The one that when he made that particular animal had a specific, amen, purpose for that animal. And that's what we have to understand. Amen. This is the God we serve. So listen, we're going to go to our Bibles, King James Version, Job chapter 39, and we're going to be reading, amen, the whole chapter down to verse number 30, amen, in the name of the Lord. And I'll read commentary as I go along the way. Um, the Lord continues his, to continue to describe his creation. Verse number one says, Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? And that's the question. Or can you mark when the hens do clave? Verse two, can you number the months that they fulfill? Question. Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn. They go forth and, re not, and return not unto them. This is how they function, this is how they operate. Verse 5 says, Who have sent out the wild ass free? Or who has loosed the bands of the wild ass? Listen to what the commentary says. It's very interesting. It says, the first two words of this chapter, knowest thou, pretty well tells the story. The fact is that man does not know. Man is, an man is able to study each animal and to understand its basic instincts, as well as its habits, strengths, peculiarities. Nevertheless, man is totally unable to even bring to understanding the manner in which God created the animal kingdom. We, we don't know. This we do know. The Bible declares that after its own kind, sometimes in chapter, sometimes in Genesis chapter number one, you can find this, everything created by God was given power to reproduce its own kind. No one thing could break this law and produce any other kind. You can find that in Genesis chapter one, verses 20 through 28. It says, now after more than 6,000 years, the law of reproduction is still unbroken. And the fact is that it will remain that way. Can you say amen? So we know that to be true. When God does something, God created the animals. God created them for a purpose. And he'll use them for his glory and praise, just as well as he'll use us, praise God. So as we get to verse number six, listen to what it says. It says, whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling. He scorns the multitude of the city. Neither regard he the crying of the driver. In other words, he's saying nothing will induce the wild ass to submit to domestication. Nothing. I don't care what you try to do. It's just not, it's not going to submit. Verse number eight says the range of the mountains is his pasture and he searches after every green thing. Verse nine says, will the unicorn be willing to serve you or abide by your crib? And the word unicorn is an un unfortunate translation since there is no word 
corresponded to unicorn in the original uh, Bible. It actually pertains to the wild bull, if you do some studying concerning that particular uh, word. Verse 10 says, listen, can you bind the unicorn with his band in Pharaoh? Or will he harrow the valleys after you? Come to says this, listen. It says, in fact, the type of wild bull mentioned here cannot be harnessed. Verse 11 says, will you trust him because his strength is great? Or will you leave your labor to him? Now, this is God talking. He's continued to talking. He's describing his creation. And he's talking about the nature of these individual animals and how they act, how they operate. Amen. And he says, as stated, he cannot be domesticated. He was talking at this time concerning the unicorn. So as we get to verse number 12, he says, will you believe him that he will bring home your seed and gather it into your bond? And he's saying this because what he's trying to get us to see and trying to get us to understand that, listen, we can't trust in the animal. You can't trust in the unicorn, but you can trust in him. Amen. He'll see you through. So will you will you believe him that he will bring home your seed? And gather it into your barn. Gavest thou the god the goodly wings unto the peacock, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? Question. Which leaves her eggs in the earth and warms them in dust, and forgets that thy foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Verse 17 says, listen, because God has deprived her of wisdom, neither has he imparted to her understanding. Wow. And isn't that something? And we're talking about the ostrich here. Uh, so he says here, verse 17, because God has deprived her of wisdom, neither has he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifts up herself on high, she scorns the horse and his rider. Listen to what the commentary says. At full pace, the fastest horse can little catch if at all, the ostrich, at least when she starts to fly. One of the most fastest creatures on earth. Isn't that something? But she's, uh, she lacks wisdom and she lacks understanding. Isn't that amazing? Verse 19 says, Have you given the horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Can you make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goes on to meet the armed men. He mocks at fear and is not affrighted. Neither turns he his back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swallows the ground with fierceness and rage. Neither believes he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, ha ha, and he smells the battle far off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Commentary says, listen, and yet the horse eats only grass or such like feed, and yet is as strong as he is. Who, who can understand that from a human perspective? And this is what God is saying as he's talking to Job. He's describing his creation, and we're seeing him basically just describing his greatness his, his, and his creation and the things that he's done. Uh, verse 26, he says, does the hawk fly by your wisdom and stretch her wings toward the south? Does the eagle mount up at your command and make her nest on high? She dwells and abides on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, and the strong place. It says, from thence she seeks the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. So as we close out chapter 39 of the book of Job, we can just find God having this conversation with Job. Can you imagine how... Job must have felt because now God was talking to him. They're having this conversation and God is showing him concerning his creation and how great he is in, in terms of his creation. But yet at the same time, we find him letting Job know that, listen, I'm here. And, and sometimes, you know, you don't need a whole lot. Sometimes you just need to know that he's there. You just need to know he's here. The problem might be still there. You might be still in with, dealing with certain situations. But the thing that's so important is just to know that God is here. He's with you and that he's never promised to leave you. And, and, and this is what we have to understand on tonight. He, he, God loves us. He cares and he's concerned about us. And he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Amen. And that's so important to understand. And that's why it is so important to know him and to know him in the pardoning of your sins. Amen. 
to be filled with his spirit, praise God, that you can inherit eternal life and live forever with him. See, that's so important. And this is the thing that as he's talking to Job, it, it reassures Job of what he already believed in, of who he was already trusting in. Amen. Even in the midst of this. And, and, and I'm saying this and I keep repeating that because this is so important, because when you're in something, uh, nobody can understand it but you. And the thing is how difficult the thing might be. But one person does, and that's God. He understands it, and he's standing right by your side. And though that's where the trust comes in, amen, that's where the uh, leaning not to our own understanding comes in, even in the midst of trials and tribulations and tests. So we got to trust in God. So you're on tonight, praise God. God wants you to know tonight that he loves you and he cares. And look, he wants to take care of you. He wants to take care of your problems. But you got to trust him enough to give it to him. You got to trust him enough to obey him and to walk with him. Because remember, this is where we started with all of this back in the book of Genesis. As we studied and read what God had commanded to the children of Israel, he said, keep my commandments, my statutes and my judgments. And he promised to bless them and to keep them. He promised to prosper them, to keep them in good health and all of those things. So you got to remember this. So as we get to the book of Job, one thing that we find God doing all throughout the Bible is reiterating what he said in the beginning reminding us of the promises that he gave us in the very beginning. And if you keep this, if you do this, I'll do this. And that's the thing that we hold on to, that we hold fast to, praise God. It's so important. So that was chapter number 39, amen, of the book of Job. Now we're going to go to chapter number 40. Now Job responds. Job answers the Lord because God has asked him all of these questions. And once again, uh, God already knew what he had in Job. He understood Job. He knew what Job would do and what Job would not do. God knows what you and I will do, amen? understand this and so he knew what he had in Job so he comes to reassure him after this long dialogue with his three closest friends then Elihu comes along with his discourse praise God and all four of them had nothing but negativity to say towards Job and he was all of these bad things but in the eyes of God he was none of them things amen and that's the thing so I don't care amen hallelujah what somebody says about you what somebody thinks about you that's not important. What God says about you and thinks about you, that's what's important. Amen? Because God knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. God knows, amen, everything concerning us. And he's going to make sure, praise God, amen, we are rewarded for our good, but you will also be punished for the bad. Amen? So we're going to go to the book, uh, Job chapter number 40, chapter number 40, and we're going to read, amen, verses 1 through 5, 1 through 5. Now, Job responds to the Lord. He responds to God. It says, listen, Job humbles himself to God. Verses 1 through 5. Listen to the commentary. Communion with the Lord effectually convinces and humbles a saint. Uh, and that's why it's so important for us to spend quality time with God, having communication with God, talking to God, I mean, on a daily basis, because communion with the Lord effectually convinces and humbles a saint. It keeps us where we're supposed to be. It says, and makes him glad to part with his most beloved sins. We don't want to sin when you are close to God, when you're in relationship with God. You don't want to do anything wrong. It says, listen, there is need to be thoroughly convinced and humble to prepare us for remarkable deliverances. After God had shown Job by his manifest ignorance of the works of nature, how unable he was to judge of the methods and designs of providence. This is why the conversation is going on. So Job, don't want to end your life. Don't think that you've done something horrible toward God. Stick with what you know. You know what you know. Stick with it. And that's for whoever this is tonight. Stick with what you know. When you know that you know that you know, and you know that word of God, stick with it. He says, he puts a convincing question to him. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? Who can instruct God? Nobody. It says, now Job began to melt into godly sorrow with, when his friends reasoned with him. He did not yield, but the voice of the Lord is powerful. When the spirit of truth is come, he shall convince. Job yields himself to the grace of God. He owns himself an offender and has nothing to say justly himself. He is now sensible that he has sinned, and therefore he calls himself vile. Repentance changes men, opinions of themselves. Job is now convinced of his error. 
those who are truly sensible in their own sinful and vileness, they are not justified themselves before God. He perceives that he was a poor, mean, foolish, and sinful creature, Lord have mercy, who ought not to have uttered one word against the divine conduct. One glimpse of God's holy nature would appall the stoutest rebel. How? Then will the wicked bear the sight of his glory at the day of judgment. But when we see this glory revealed in Jesus Christ, we shall be humbled without being terrified. Self-abasement agrees with filial love. Isn't that something? How he deals with Job, how he talks to Job, and Job wanting to die because of what he was dealing with and what he was going through. But what God wants him to see and understand is to trust me. Even in this, and I keep saying that because somebody might be going through something right now. Trust God even in that right now. Even though it might look bad. Even though uh, it's not comfortable. Trust God even in that. And this is what he wants us to understand here as we read the book of Job. Okay, we're going to go to our Bibles now. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Job chapter 40, verse 1 through 5. Job answers the Lord. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he who contends with the Almighty instruct him? He who reproves God, let him answer it. Anybody that's going to instruct God, going to counsel God, let him answer it. Let him speak. This is what the commentary says. It says, The basic sin of the human race is contending with the Almighty God. And that's one of our greatest problems. Not trusting God, but we're contending with God. It says, men have a tendency to blame God for the terrible problems of mankind. Can you say amen? And we know that to be true because as soon as some, something happens uh, bad in your family or in your life, the first thing people do is they turn and they blame God for it. Why? Why do we blame God for bad things that happen in our lives? I wonder why. Listen to what verse 3 says. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vowed. He, he didn't try to... Uh, rational, rationalize with what was going on in his life and say, well, Lord, look at me. Look at what I've gone through. Look at what I've lost. He didn't do any of that. When he opened his mouth, the Bible says here in verse number three, then Job answered the Lord and said, behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? He, he's talking to God. Lord, I can't answer you. He says, I will lay my hands upon my mouth. This is what the commentary says. It says, Job convicted of his ignorance his impotence and his sinfulness at last learns the lesson that it seems none of us can learn without at least some such trial. And, and, and this is interesting here because why do we have to go through a trial to learn something? Why do we have to go through hardship to learn something? You know, some things you don't want to learn the hard way. Amen. Some things you just want to be obedient in. Listen to what it says. It says, as a son of Adam, he was a total moral wreck. And consequently, he loathed himself, though he had done all he could to live right. He did not learn the humiliating, humiliating lesson. So as long as he con confronted the church, i.e. his three friends is what they're talking about here. But he, but he learned it directly when he entered into the sinless light of the presence of God. So you see, nothing can be revealed fully until you're in the presence of the almighty God. You're not going to get the clear picture here. You're not going to get the clear picture from man. It has to come from God himself. This is what it says. It says, the light showed his comeliness to actually be corruption and his righteousness to be as filthy rags. Isn't that something? Because any thought contrary to how God thinks is offensive to God. See, this is the part we got to grab and we have to understand. I hope I'm helping somebody with this. Even that he had did nothing in terms of, of denying God or cursing God to his face as the devil said he would do, he was hoping he had never been born. He was wishing that, uh, you know, he could just get out of here. He could just die, that this would all be over. God never wants us to be in that position or thinking that way. And, and this is what it's trying to show us here. Amen? That no matter what we're going through, our hope is in him. Our trust is in him. Uh, we're li he, that's why the Bible says over in the book of Romans, says all things work together for the good to them that love God and we're called according to his purpose. See, that's the part we got to get. That's the part we got to understand. All things work together for the good. And this is what Job was not putting on display at the time. 
yet trusting God, but yet hoping that he was never boring. Hope, you know, naked that came in the world, naked I'll leave, and all of these other things that he was quoting and commenting as he was going along the way, as he was enduring. But one thing I love about God is God understands who we are. He understands our frailties. He understands these things. He understands our manner of thinking. You see, so he deals with Job in a, such a way to bring him to an understanding concerning him in that area because he had no problems in the area of who God was in terms of serving God and loving God and trying to live right for God. He was doing those things and God said he did those things. So that was not even in question. But in terms of uh, thinking by chance after listening to these four individuals that by chance, maybe I might have just, just done something not to please God because that's all he heard. You see what I'm saying? But God comes along to reassure him that's not the case. So verse number five says, listen, once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. It says here, Job now realizes the filthy, the fertility and even the foolishness of his arguments of saying such things as saying, I want to die. You know, just let me go. So this pain and this hurt. Uh, and this, uh, of course, you can probably figure in terms of being around the people, you know, being embarrassed and all those things. So all of this can just be over. No, God wants us to live and live for him and be a living witness of who he is and what he can do in our lives when we trust him. And through this, praise God, even through what Job is going through, it's, it's, it'll help somebody else see God and help somebody else get delivered for some things. And that's the thing that's so important. And that's what we have to do. Let our light shine that men might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. See, I'm learning now that church is not just about coming on a Sunday, shouting and dancing, and then going home. No, it's about learning about God, the things of God, how we're supposed to function, how we're supposed to operate, amen, how we're supposed to handle difficult situations, or things like that, how we are to handle one another. These things are so important. This is what we come to learn, amen? And he teaches us all of these things in his word. So as the word is being administered, praise God, then you, that's why it's so important to take notes, praise God, and then to go back home afterwards and study it. To see what God is trying to get you to see and comprehend and to, and to, and to operate by. It is so important. Okay, now we're going to go uh, back to our commentary. And we're going to read verses 6 through 14. Uh, Job chapter number 46 through 14 in our commentary. The Lord reasons with Job to show his righteousness, power, and wisdom. And like I said once again, I, I love how God is handling him. Um, he knows what Job has gone through. He allowed it. He, he understands that. He understands that Job is a mere man, but a faithful man, a faithful man of God. And so he says, the Lord reasons with Job to show his righteous power and wisdom. Verses 6 through 14. Listen to what the commentary says. Those who profit by what they have heard from God shall hear more from him. Now that's powerful. Uh, I shared a message we were, amen, over with a, uh, our friend, our brother, on this Sunday evening, amen, uh, Pastor Jeffrey Long, Communion Church, and I preached a message, Blessed. Uh, and you got to know this for yourself. You got to know that you're blessed. And this is those who profit by what they have heard from God, following God, obeying God, shall hear more from him. You got to know this. That's why you got to open your mouth and say it out of your own mouth. I'm blessed. I, I don't care what you're going through right now. I'm blessed. If you're serving him, you've heard the word of God. You've heard what his promises are. You've heard what he said he'll do if you obey him and keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments. You're blessed. He tells us this. Listen to what it says. He says, and those who are truly convinced of sin yet need to be more thoroughly convinced and more humbled. See, that's how we're supposed to come. This is what Christians are supposed to look like. No doubt God and he only has the power to humble and bring down proud men. He has wisdom to know when and how to do it. And it's not for us to teach him how to govern the world. That ain't our job. Our job is to obey and follow him. Our own hands cannot save us by recommending us to God's grace, much less rescuing us from his justice. And therefore, into his hand, we must commit ourselves. And I was just thinking about something as I pause here. You, you come to church Sunday after Sunday. You come to Bible class. You come to Sunday school. But it's so important to make sure that you saved Make sure that you have the Holy Ghost. Make sure that is so important. That's the only way that you can spend eternity with him. I, I was just wondering, I say, I mean, some folk come to church and 
you never hear him speaking in tongues. You never see him shouting. You, you, I, I mean, nothing ever affects him. Nothing ever reaches them. Nothing ever touches them. If, if, if you're in that place, please, please examine yourself to make sure that you have it. Make sure this is something that you can't, you know, take a chance with. Please, please. So it, it says, you know, uh, much less rescuing us from his justice and therefore into his hands we must commit ourselves. It says, listen, the renewal of a believer proceeds in the same way of conviction, humbling and watchfulness against remaining sin as his first conversion. When convinced of many evils in our conduct, we still need convincing of many more. So I don't care how many battles with yourself that you conquer, there's still something else. There's something else to look at. There's something else that you need to take care of. There's something else, amen, in this sinful flesh. So that's why it's so imperative, it's so important that you get the Holy Ghost, that you have God's Spirit on the inside, amen? And, 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 and I mean, I'm talking about seriously um, being touched and moved by the power of God, amen, at, at some point in your life. I see so many people come Sunday after Sunday. You never see them say anything. You never see them speaking in tongues. You never see them dance. And I said, uh, talking to God, I said, Lord, are they saved? Do they really have it? What's wrong? Are they so burdened down that uh, they can't give you glory? I mean, what is it? What is it? And this is what we find here in the book of Job. We find God, even in his, this terrible situation this man is in. He's lost his children. He's lost everything he had. His wife is telling him to curse God and die. He has scales on his body. His friends come along, ridicule him. Elihu comes along and tells him he knows nothing and he's just a hypocrite and wicked. And now we find God, amen, talking to Job, letting Job know, listen, if I could do all of that, can I keep you in this? Ask God tonight with whatever you might be dealing with. Lord, can you keep me in this and trust him for it? Amen. So now let's go to our King James Version of the Bible and we're going to read verses, amen, 6 through 14. 6 through 14. It says, Then answered the Lord unto Job out of a whirlwind and said, Gird up your loins now like man. Out of a whirlwind he speaks to him, still dealing with his creation and how his creation operates by his word. Isn't that something? Whew. Good God Almighty. He says, gird up your loins like now like man, and I will demand of you and declare thou unto me. This is what the commentary says. Job is given every opportunity of making good his pleas before God. If he has anything to say that he really wishes to urge, God is ready to hear, even anxious to hear him uh, speak. Isn't that something? So God's given him this opportunity to, to respond. Because you know how we do sometimes in our pity parties and sometimes we want to just find an excuse for something uh, to justify what we've done or not done. And so God says, look, you can speak now. Here it is. Verse number eight says, listen, will you also disannul my judgment? Will you condemn me? So anytime we don't trust God, anytime we don't praise God, do what God is instructing us, anytime, amen, we don't have faith in God, we're, we're, we're telling God we really don't trust you, we really don't believe. Um, you know, and that's so important. I asked uh, the, the saint something uh, one Sunday in Sunday school that just came across my mind. And just, I wanted to know. I said, why do we spend so much time teaching believers to believe? And I asked him that question. Why do we spend so much time teaching believers to believe? We're the ones that are supposed to be walking by faith, not by sight, trusting God, that God can do all things but fail. We're supposed to be encouraging the unbelievers. We're supposed to be, amen, uh, on our assignments, praise God, knowing that, praise God, when we uh, follow God's word and do God's will, amen, we're going to be blessed going in and blessed going out, praise God. We know everything we touch, going, we're going to have good success when we trust God. We know, praise God, because Jesus is Lord, amen, that, amen, we're going to be all right. We're going to spend eternity with him. All of those things are supposed to be lodged in our hearts. Then soon as something come our way, we fall apart. Now, isn't that something? So it teaches us and tells us that we got to get back into God's word. We have to get a better understanding of who God is. And this is what he's doing with Brother Job in terms of his creation. 
to let him know, don't think like that, Brother Job. I'm here. I got this. I can handle this. Trust me. You got to trust me in this one. I know you can't see it. I know you don't. it don't feel right right now, but you got to trust me in this. And because if we know the story, we know because how the outcome becomes. But God does exactly what he says he's going to do. Amen. For verse number eight says, will you also disannul my judgment? Will you condemn me that you may be righteous? He asked him a question. This is what the commentary says. Men have been trying to disannul the judgment of God from the very beginning. Uh, evolution and all of these other things trying to discredit God, trying to say that God didn't create these things. They say, hey amen, you can do all these other things and everything's going to be all right. Or even having these false gods, praise God, that they worship, worshiping the animals that God even created. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? You're worshiping the creature that God created. Lord have mercy. It says, listen, God's judgment is his word. Whew. Now that's powerful right there. God's judgment is his word. He ain't going to change it for you. He's not going to change it for me. His word is his word. And that's the thing that we have to hold fast to. Um, and I just got thoughts going through my mind. It's just a lot, but I won't share all of those tonight. But it's just concerning God's word. And as we look to certain individuals to help us and to guide us along the way, uh, making sure that we stay on track. Uh, and as I was uh, talking to the Lord on this morning, we were having this conversation. I don't know about you all, but I just mean God just talk. I just talk to him regular. Uh, and so as we were talking this morning, uh, the conversation was this. Well, if I need a plumber, I'm not going to call an auto mechanic. If I need a plumber, I'm going to call a plumber. So if you need something pertaining to the kingdom of God and God, then you ought to call somebody that knows the things about God. Am I right? to be able to assist you and to be able to help you uh, and to be able to instruct you. Uh, and, and that's the thing we have to understand. Uh, I mean, I mean, in anything that you do, you might have some knowledge of uh, plumbing. You might have some knowledge of a car repair. But when your car's broken, you want an auto mechanic. You, you're not going to call a plumber to fix your car. You're not going to call an uh, uh, auto mechanic to fix your plumbing. You, you want somebody that knows about plumbing that can fix it for you. And it's the same thing when it comes to the church, you know. And that person, the pastor, is supposed to be knowledgeable to be able to help you pertaining to the things uh, of the kingdom of God. And that's the point I'm driving at. And so God's, God's word is his judgment. God's word. And this is what we must understand. It is so important. And then... You know, no man knows all. No one man knows it all. But what we do know is we can pray and we can ask God and amen. And God will make sure we get the answer. If you're serving God, do you believe God will allow you to go along and not get the answer that you need that's pertaining to you and your life so that you can have a better walk and relationship with him? You don't think God will answer? Yes, he will. Verse 9, listen. Have you an arm like God? Question. Or can you thunder with a voice like him? Deck yourselves now with the majesty and excellency and array yourselves with the glory and beauty. Commentary says, of course, Job could not do that, but the Lord could do it for Job and in fact, ultimately did. Yeah, we can't do it, but God can. And amen, he's going to do it for brother Job. Verse 11 says, cast abroad the rage of your wrath and behold everyone who is proud and abase him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. It says, listen, in other words, Job is a mere mortal and he cannot do what God alone can do. And neither can any other person, any other man. We can't do what God can do. Verse 13 says, hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret, which only God can do. Verse number 14. Then will I also confess unto you that your own right hand can save you. Man's problem has ever been that he thinks he can save himself. There is only one answer for man, and that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. First Corinthians 1 and 23. And that is the answer to Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. Jesus Christ is the answer for you and me. And that's why I made the statement earlier about why do we spend so much time teaching believers to believe? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we shouldn't have to spend time doing that. We give you better clarity and better understanding, but you ought to be trusting and believing God. Amen. That is so important. Um, so now we're going to go to the commentary and we're going to read verses 15 through 24 and we actually close out this chapter. Um, listen to what it says. God's power shown in behemoth. In behemoth. God's power shown in behemoth. It says, listen, God, for the further proving of his own power, describes two vast animals. And I'm reading the commentary. Far exceeding man in bulk and strength. Behemoth signifies beef, beast. Most, under, most understanding of an animal well known in Egypt 
called the river horse or hippopotamus. This vast animal is noticed as an argument to humble ourselves before the great God. For he created this vast animal, which is so fearfully and wonderfully made. Whatever strength this or any other creature has, it is derived from God. He that made the soul of man knows all the ways to it and can make the sword of justice, his wrath, to approach and touch it. Every godly man has spiritual weapons, the whole armor of God, to resist, yea, to overcome the tempter, that he never, that his never dying soul may be safe. Whatever becomes of his frail flesh and mortal body. And in so many words, trusting in God. If God can create an animal such as that, my God, we know what he can do for us. Can you say amen? And this is what he's trying to show us. Um, and then you look at some of these, these beautiful creatures uh, that God has made. And it's just amazing. Uh, when you look at the size of the lion, I mean, my God, how huge it is. I mean, it's just amazing how God does what he does. But listen, verse 15, King James Version. We're going to read that and we'll begin to close out this particular chapter. It says, Behold now, behemoth, which I made with you, which I made with you. He eats grass as an ox. The behemoth is probably the hippo. This particular animal eats grass. Isn't it amazing how an animal can be so large, so huge? I mean, I mean, thousands of pounds just eating grass. Isn't that something? They don't tell me God ain't awesome. So you can see how even... In God's creation for the animals, everything was prepared for them. Everything was there that would sustain them, that they would need just as well as man. Verse 16 says, look, lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar. They say the sinew of his stones are wrapped together. Verse 18, his bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. And he goes on to describe the hippo or the behemoth and, and, and just talking about the attributes of it and how strong he is and all of these other things just to show you in his creation of how wonderful he is. Lord have mercy. Verse 19 says, He is the chief of the ways of God. He who have made him can make his word to approach unto him. Commentary says, listen, in that day, God alone could bring down such a beast. Whew. God created, God can bring it down. God can take care of anything. Verse 20 says, surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. He lies under the shady trees in the covert of reed and fins. This is exactly descriptive of the hippopotamus and far less so of the elephant or any other such like animal. And if you ever studied the hippopotamus, you'll see him laying under the shade trees and different things like that. So we can see him uh, uh, alluding to that here. Uh, verse 22 says, The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinks up a river and hastes not. He trusts that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. In other words, he thinks he can drink the whole river because he's so big. It says, verse 24, He takes it with his eyes. His nose pierces through snares. And this is the commentary as we close out. Once again, why would the Lord address these things which seems to have no bearing whatsoever on Job's situation? The idea is this. This great contest with Job caught in the middle between God and Satan, because that's important to remember, is being played out before the entire spiritual world. Remember? I, I said something. I was doing some teaching at one point, and I had said something that if Jesus Christ would have failed, when he was in the wilderness, when he was in the wilderness after being uh, fasting 40 days and being tempted in the wilderness by the devil, if he would have failed, we would have all failed. If he didn't succeed in that endeavor, we would have all failed. And so here it says, it says, it says Job is caught in the middle between God and Satan is being played out before the entire spiritual world. Among other things, the Lord desires to show the futility of man or even Satan and fallen angels contending with him it cannot successfully be done so now you you got to remember the story it's so it's, it's this it's this this thing going between god and satan and remember the story see you got to understand from god's perspective job in the middle has no clue of what's going on he just caught in the middle of it in suffering he's caught in the middle of it and going through some things he, he, but it's for a purpose 
Amen. And for God's glory. But not only that, it's going to also help others. You see, this is the part you have to see and you have to understand. So as we close out chapter number 40, it alludes to somewhat that look of what Jesus Christ would have to do to save you and I having to give his life on Calvary. Amen. That you and I could live. It, it alludes to that because he, he, he was without sin. He that knew no sin died for us that had sin. Now look at that. See the spiritual aspect of the matter. He starts to deal with that. So now he, he's going to die for you and me. He takes on the, the punishment that we should have received being guilty. Amen. We should have received this punishment, but he takes our place. Look at, look at God. And we can find this here. So dealing in the spiritual realm that he could come, that he could, amen, uh, show himself alive, amen, to teach us what we ought to do. And then he gives his life for us, amen. And then all we have to do is believe on him. And we can be saved. We can be healed. We can be delivered. Because that was the only way, amen. Because Jesus Christ had to bring this thing to a completion. And without God, we could, he could never bring this completion because then we would still be in the Old Testament where you would have to still keep bringing sacrifices to the altar for a season for remittal of your sins. But no, God's plan was to make this thing become permanent. And that's the thing in the face of Jesus Christ. So that's so important. So we can kind of see the parallel here, the symbolism here of what Brother Job is going through and what God is doing in this, amen, uh, it's not a battle because between them, there's no such thing as a battle because God <laughs> wins. This discourse that they're having concerning Job, because remember, the devil's going throughout the earth trying to find who he could devour. And notice, he, he, he couldn't find nobody. See, uh, it, it's a lot when we begin to study this Bible. And I mentioned this before, but he couldn't find nobody. And, and, when, and, and the one that God selected, he says, I have somebody. God said, I got somebody. Have you considered my faithful servant, Job? But watch what the devil said after God said that. He said, oh, you got a hedge around him. I can't get to him. So I'm walking to and fro throughout the earth, and I'm trying to find somebody I can devour. But I can't get Job because Job got a hedge around him. So why wasn't he messing with somebody else? See, we got to look at these principles that we find in the word of God. And God said, have you considered my faithful servant, Job? So as we close out chapter number 40, we can see what's going on here. The dialogue, the test that's going on. Job caught in the middle, but God knew what he had in Job, and he knew Job wouldn't fail him. But now he's encouraging Job, amen, even in the midst of all of this, still trust me. Even though you're trusting me, trust me even with your life. Trust me with the situation. Trust that I can change it. Trust, trust that everything is in the palm of my hands. Tr trust that I'm, I'm upholding everything. Even in, in a time such as this, it, at your worstest day, your worstest time, God is still upholding things in your life. And that's why you got to just trust him and you got to seek him. Even while it's bad, you got to seek him. If you're in the hospital, you got to trust him. No matter what you're going through, broke, trust him. I don't care what it is. Problems at school, problems on the job, trust him. Because God has everything under his control. Amen. So we close out, amen, chapter number 40. Uh, tonight. I, I pray tonight that, man, these two lessons, you've learned something. You've gotten something out of it tonight. I mean, once again, as we study this first poetic book, uh, praise God, in the Bible, the book of Job. I mean, powerful teaching. A, a lot that we can actually learn, amen, and apply to our lives. Uh, so much. That's why it's important. Once again, please take notes. And the Lord's will on next Wednesday, we'll be back, amen, in chapters, amen. We're going to be closing out because we're here at the end now. Uh, chapter 42. We only have one chapter on next Wednesday. Um, and we're going to close out on next Wednesday, the book of Job. We're going to do just that one chapter, so I won't hold you long, hopefully. Um, so the secretary will send you a copy of the study questions and the commentary. Now, remember, once again, um, if you're not on our mailing list, our emailing list, and please email us at htcocministry at gmail.com, and we can add you to our emailing list. And this is for our friends and partners and those that are joining us on tonight. Um, if you do that, we'll put you on an email list that you can receive the commentary and also the study questions that you can put that in your library and your study file um, that you can go back and look at when you're studying because we just are just reading the scriptures. We're not doing anything outside of that. Uh, this Bible class is structured to where we just read the Bible We're not, and we just read the commentary to have a better understanding of what each verse is saying as it transitions from verses to verses so we'll know exactly what the Lord is saying so we can have complete understanding. And when you have complete understanding, you can serve him better. 
You can walk with him better. You can trust him better. Amen. So somebody needs to trust him on tonight. And he did all of this that we could live and not die. He did all of this that we could have eternal life. He did all of this that we could be happy today. Not just not tomorrow in heaven with him, but today while we're in this present earth right now. So you have to understand that. Amen. And, and if you if you, you want to check me, go back and read it. He told Israel, if you trust me, he said, I want to I want to be your God and I want you to be my people. And as your God, this is what I'll do for you. I'll protect you. I'll cover you. I'll keep you. I'll provide for you. This is what he said. And that same promise is for you and me today. So you have to understand that. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the part of your sins, come to him. You have to repent of your sins. The Bible says and be baptized in Jesus' name. And the Lord promised to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If that's you on the night, come on. Because ain't nothing going to change until you come to Christ. Nothing's going to change. Situations and circumstances are not going to change. They're not going to get better. God helps you with everything. He helps you with your financial situations. He helps you with your relationships. But it only works if we obey him. It only, you can read your Bible all day and night. It doesn't matter. If you don't obey what he's saying, nothing's going to change. So you got to read your word. You got to obey God. And he'll help you in all these areas of your life. Amen. So once again, I pray that you've been blessed on tonight. I pray that you, amen, have gotten something out of these two chapters, amen, in the name of the Lord. Now we're going to go to, amen, our study questions on tonight. I'm going to let you guys go in Jesus' name. So Job chapter 39, and there's only one question for that one. Um, what other animals does God ask Job about? Well, you'll find that in Job chapter 39, verse 1, 5, verses 9, 13, 19, Verse 26 and 27. That's where you'll find that because we read the whole chapter, remember? And the answer is wild goats, wild ass, unicorn, peacocks, ostriches, horses, hawks, and eagles. These are all the animals that he described, amen, in chapter number 39 as we read on tonight. And then Job chapter number 40. Uh, the first question says, what question did God ask Job? What question did God ask Job? You'll find it in Job chapter 40, verses 1 and two, it says, shall he that contends with the almighty instruct him? That's what he asked. Him. Question number two, how did Job answer God? He answered God, I am vile. He didn't try to cover it up. He didn't try to paint it or fix it up. He said, no, I'm vile. What shall I answer you? I will lay my hand on my mouth. Lord, I can't answer you. I can't respond. You're a God. And that's in the a part of the humbling that he kept going over. See, anytime something's in the Word of God, it's, he's trying to get our attention. So maybe we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The Bible says when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due season. Question number three. From where did God speak to Job? From where did God speak to Job? You'll find in Job chapter number 40, verse number six, from a whirlwind. When he did speak, talking about how mighty and powerful he was in creation, amen, he began to speak to Job through a whirlwind. Now, can you imagine that? Good God Almighty. What a mighty God we serve. Okay, amen. That was the end of our study questions. Praise God. So listen, once again, we thank God for you on tonight. Once again, in the Lord's will, next Wednesday, we're going to be, amen, in chapters number 42 of the book of Job. Secretary, like send you a copy of that and the commentary on that. Amen. Please study it if you can prior to tonight. And if you do have any questions by chance, please send them to me beforehand. I'll try to do my best to answer them live while we're on Bible class. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Now, thank God for each and every one of you, all our partners that tune in every Every Wednesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers and thank you as for your liberal giving. We appreciate to keep this amen broadcast on the air. We have so many partners out there that are being a blessing to this ministry, uh, to this Bible class, and we want to say thank you on tonight. And we're praying for you, amen, in Jesus' name. Now, listen, coming on this Friday, amen, we have our youth virtual Bible class. My God, my God. Friday, March the 22nd at 7 p.m. So, amen, the information, amen, they should have how to, amen, log in, praise God, and looking to have a high time, amen, in the name of the Lord. Using this technology, uh, he praise God, to the glory of God, amen. So we thank God for that. This Friday at 7 p.m., our youth, then the Youth for Christ choir rehearsal will be this Saturday. The Youth for Christ choir rehearsal this Saturday, Saturday, March 23rd, from 10 a.m. until 12. So we have youth 
choir rehearsal this Saturday, March 20th from 10 to 12. It may end the name of the Lord. And then after choir rehearsal, praise God, we got the youth bowling outing Saturday, March 23rd, also at 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 at AMF Capital Plaza Lanes. That's at 4601 Cooper Lane, and that's in Hyattsville, Maryland, 20784. The cost was $20, and that includes bowling, the game shoes, rental food, and soft drinks. Wow, you cannot beat that. Uh, please contact uh, Junior Missionary Pamela Leach or Sister Trina Curry to, to sign up. You were supposed to have signed up by Wednesday, March 20th in the name of But they're giving you to today. So today you can sign up today, today, right now. You got to do it now, though, okay? <laughs> You're the last hour. Amen in Jesus name. So we thank God for that. And amen. Coming this Sunday. My God, my God. HTC Sunday School Continental Breakfast. Praise God. Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Starts at 8 o'clock. I know. Amen. You got to get up early. That's why we want to amen. Have food for you. You don't have to pay anything. Just come and dine. Praise God. And then after you dine, praise God. Sunday School. And there is a class for everyone even we have a nursery class praise god all the way up amen to the adults so please come there's a class for everybody so we can learn the word of the lord what thus saith the lord is so important so we would love to have you to be with us this coming sunday and amen we're celebrating palm sunday on this sunday amen hallelujah that triumphant entry into jerusalem praise god that the lord had decided amen that he would give his life for you and i so we're going to bless the name of god this sunday and we're going to be giving our palms amen to everybody that comes in the house at 11 a.m. Palm Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Listen, invite a neighbor, invite a friend to come out, praise God, to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus name. And amen. Also, after Sunday morning worship, my God, my God, we're going to have out with the old. Hallelujah. HCC Women's Department, Sunday, March 24th, 2024. First Lady Sheena Marek and Missionary Cynthia Sykes will be accepting these items. And I believe today was the last day for those items. So I pray, amen, that you were able to be a blessing, that somebody else can be blessed, praise God, with your donations. I pray. And you come on out if you're in need of something, praise God. This is what this is all about. It's the Sisters to Sister Recycling Program, amen, at the HTC. So come on out and be blessed. Uh, in the name of the Lord. And that's going to be on Sunday, amen, immediately after morning worship service in Jesus' name. And also, man, the youth are, man, they're on, they're on fire, praise God. You got the HCU Youth for Christ uh, snack store. So they've opened up a store, praise God, and they're going to be selling snacks, praise God, I believe, on this coming Sunday, Sunday, March the 24th. So I thank God for our youth. They're getting busy, amen, in the name of the Lord. And so support them, praise God. In Jesus name. So look, I want to thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. Thank God for everyone that's hung in there on tonight. I pray once again that you've been blessed by something that was said tonight, something that was read in Jesus name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We bless your holy name. Lord, we thank you for everyone that tuned in on tonight. I pray tonight that you would bless them, bless their families. God, once again, bless everyone that's connected to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they're in need of, God, meet that need right now. Father, we thank you. If one is sick or going through something right now as we're speaking, God, we pray right now that you would lay your healing hands on them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we know you do all things well. Father, we know because, hallelujah, we get the testimonies, eh? amen, the saints that are being healed and delivered and set free. We thank God, Lord, for you blessing Missionary Miller, Lord. We thank you for blessing uh, your daughter, Sister Kia Banks. We thank you, Lord, for blessing Minister Spinks. We thank you, Lord, for blessing all of those that are going through even in this hour, Sister Janice, God. We thank you for all of those, praise God, that you've laid your hands on and that you're going to lay your hands on in the name of Jesus Christ father we know you can do all things but fail and for this we say thank you and Lord that's why we call on you that's why we praise you that's why we glorify your name so Lord I says you look upon us tonight Lord we thank you and praise you we ask you to keep us in the hall of thine hand God and let nothing fail let us be safe till we meet again we love you and we praise you we adore your wonderful name we give you honor glory and praise father it's in Jesus name we pray Amen, amen, amen. Look, I love you with the love of Christ. God bless you till we meet again in Jesus' name.